we actually think the production side is the more important point here. Uh, if they if they're able to ramp production that the, the you know the way they have in the U.S. and really get that significant uh, amount of vehicles on the road or available to sell, uh, we think the demand side is there. So uh, you know there should be uh, plenty of people looking to purchase the Model Three in China. If you look at the population and the upper middle class is significantly larger, it's larger than the United States as a whole. So you have the purchasing power and you have the opportunity. The big question is, are they going to be able to execute on production? And that's what we're really paying close attention to. Looking at what happened to Tesla in 2019, I mean, for all those short sellers out there, really did get burned at some points. And this makes us wonder, I mean, if you're talking about deliveries, if you're talking about expectations when it comes to what Tesla says, when it comes to what Elon Musk says, I mean, others have called into question his ambitious goals before. Do you think they've put all those critics to rest now? What can we expect for the stock's direction this year? Uh, I, I don't think they put all the critics to rest. I, I think we absolutely had this move because of the short squeeze, um, the big move because of that. But if you look at uh, you know the company, if you look at valuation by itself, valuation alone is never a reason to buy or sell a stock. So mm -hmm. you know, looking at the fundamentals, the fundamentals have been improving. The big question is, will the company continue to execute? Uh, are they going to be able to execute at this type of growth rate? And then are they going to be able to contribute to the bottom line? If, they, if they're able to show sustainable profitability, the stock's going to continue continue to move higher. On valuation metrics, it looks outrageously expensive on almost every single metric, but this is one of the, the biggest open-ended growth opportunities out there in technology, and you know that it's certainly getting valued that way. And yet, Brad, you have a neutral rating on the stock. My, so my analyst, uh, Dan Ives, uh, covers the stock. I am the strategist, so I, I look at all technology. So uh, Dan does have a neutral on the stock. Yeah, so, so again, my follow-up essentially being what will get you to be more optimistic about the story because you're sounding more optimistic actually about, you know, their strategy in China and the overall business. The, the, to us, we have to be you know, clear on how much upside can there be. Uh, when you get into uncharted territory with valuations that are really sort of out of bounds, uh, you know, that makes you sort of cause uh, and pause for a concern. Uh, if I was an owner of the stock, I, I don't see any reason why I'd be selling it here. Uh, to put new money to work at this level, uh, you have to really believe in the 10-year the plan here because it's not getting valued for next year or the year after. It's, it's being valued for three to five years from now. Hi, I'm Emily Tan, and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.